This is a video on how I converted my 2013 Jeep Wrangler JK front end and tail lights to a 1990s Land Rover Defender front end and back end. People ask me why I did this and the reason is pretty simple. The truth is I really wanted a 1995 or 97 Land Rover Defender but based on what I was reading about the problems, limitations and costs associated with ownership and my experience with a 1997 Toyota FJ40, as well as the similar experiences with my 1992 Mercedes-Benz 250 GD or G-Wagon. I didn't want a third old 4x4 with the limitations and frustrations that I had already experienced with these vehicles. And I'll just discuss this more at the end of the video. So here's what I did. I got on my computer and I figured out a way to line up the bottle body panels between the Wrangler and the Defender. Then I electronically cut the Fender off the Land Rover and laid it on top of the Jeep and it seemed to fit pretty well. So I tried to make sure that I researched the areas of the conversion where I would likely have, you know, to do some, have to do some intricate panel fabrication. And I found out the Wrangler JK body is about an inch narrower than the Defender. And this excludes the fender flares. However, the tire stance of the Jeep is actually wider than the 1990s Defender. I figured this out because I wanted to determine if the fender flares would cover the wheels correctly. And once satisfied with my electronic homework, I decided to take the next step and I purchased a 2013 Jeep Wrangler JK Sahara. It was in good condition with about 92,000 miles on it. Then I purchased the driver's side fender or what the British call wing for a Land Rover Defender. And I removed the driver's side Jeep fender and flare, then overlaid the, overlaid, excuse me, the Land Rover wing on the Jeep. And at this moment, I could see the conversion coming together. I knew that the fender's tire opening or the, the wheel well, um, getting it to line up over the tire was critical. At the same time, I had to be cognizant of how low the Land Rover fender needed to drop in order to stay even with the rear fender, right, and wheel well. And this is because I wanted to allow the windshield to fold down onto the hood, or as the British call it, the uh, bonnet. And by the way, the windshield does not lay down on a 90s Land Rover Defender. One of the many improvements this Jeep conversion has over the uh, authentic Defender. So after all my research, I decided to move forward with the project. I removed the uh, entire front end of the Jeep and purchased more Land Rover Defender parts from my friend Travis over at Rovers North in Vermont. I spent hours studying how to make all of the lines on the vehicle look right. I wanted to, you know, make a finished product that looked like it was built by a, you know, a factory. And I pulled strings across the vehicle and analyzed the lines from every possible ang angle to make sure I got it right. And here I'm pointing out that I made sure the front and rear wheel wells were at the same height. I was also careful to make sure that the front tire was in the center of the, the front fender wheel well. And I must have assembled and disassembled the front end of this thing 50 times because, you know, I wanted to make it perfect. And uh, it was at this point here in the fabrication that I determined the front end sat too high on the Jeep. Uh, it wouldn't look right and the windshield wouldn't go down. I spent hours studying how to drop the front end while you know, trying to minimize the amount of cuts on the Jeep. So in the end, I figured out that the, to get the fitment just right, I had to remove the headlight assemblies and cut areas of the Jeep up near the firewall in order to drop the Land Rover front end enough. I also had to cut the Jeep cowling and the Land Rover bonnet as it hung too far over the front of the vehicle. This was also preventing the uh, fender wheel wells from lining up over the tires too. So uh, I had to fabricate new mounting points, of course, for the Land Rover bonnet hinges, and um, I had to create attachment points for the fenders to ensure rigidity. Ultimately, I figured it all out because, um, 
you know, the fenders were very strong as shown in this picture of me standing on the wing and I weigh about 180 pounds. I wanted to make sure that the vehicle could be easily serviced with full access to everything under the hood. I accomplished that. Here I cut the passenger wing and fastened a stainless steel latch system that allows the Jeep fuses to be easily accessed. And while working on a vehicle, I learned that the rear of the Jeep two-door and four-door are about 63 inches wide, excluding fender flares. The Land Rover is about 64 inches wide, excluding the fender flares. At the Jeep windshield, however, uh, the width measures just over four, 61 inches. And I'll cover why this is a big deal in a moment. So by the way, the British call the fender flares eyebrows. I don't think I'm spending, spelling flares correctly there, but that's all right. These differences in widths between the two vehicles meant that when I placed the Defender front end onto the Wrangler JK, I had to build custom panels that tapered the 64 inches width of the Land Rover fenders uh, down to meet the 61 inch width of the Jeep at the windshield. The transition I came up with is not as dramatic as shown in this diagram. I actually made it so gradual that no one other than those who watch this video would ever be able to figure it out. This is, this is a view of the new wing attached to the Jeep. Notice the fabricated panels I machined, which fill in where the Land Rover Defender panel didn't reach the door of the Jeep Wrangler JK. And I keep saying JK because um, I, this, I have no idea how to do this on a TJ. I'd have to figure it out or another model. So I had to shape pieces of metal to compensate for gaps created by removing the Jeep front quarter panel here. And I never started with sheets of aluminum or steel before I created these panels, by the way. I, I always created paper templates first to save money and time, or I used cor corrugated plastic board or something like that. Notice that I cut the windshield brackets right there at the red arrow. This was done because putting the windshield down on a JK requires taking these off, which is way too much of a hassle compared to my old Toyota FJ and Mercedes G-Wagon. Jeep, however, finally got this right in the 2008 model. Putting the windshield down for me is a must because I love the open air when I drive with eye protection, of course. The windshield on a uh, authentic Land Rover Defender like this one cannot be folded down, so. This is another reason why I didn't want an actual Defender. Because I wanted the ability to put the windshield down quick and easy, I had to remove the supports between the side-to-side -side roll bar, you know, just above the door there, and the windshield to help ensure the vehicle stays safe. I then installed a uh, aftermarket trail cage. And I welded these stops onto the trail cage near the top there and inserted rubber bumpers that support the windshield when it's up. And I used rugged, I used rugged Velcro straps to hold it in place. I also removed the tail lights on the Jeep and fabricated a panel with lights that resembled the uh, 1990 style Defender 90 and 110. And here's a look at the other side before I uh, painted them up. When you compare the rear of the authentic Land Rover Defender to a Jeep conversion here, you'll notice it, uh, uh, that backup light probably isn't enough, but uh, just below the bumper, I installed very bright backup lights that you know really can't be seen in this photo. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would anyone do this? And this is really a, a very easy question for me to answer. I like owning vehicles that are different, you know, I love my 1977 FJ40 and my 92 Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, but I can tell you from lots of experience over 20 years um, what the downsides are of owning these types of old 4x4 vehicles. So I came up with 14 issues to consider when purchasing an older 4x4. Number one, motors are underpowered. This creates a problem when pulling out into park to uh, traffic. The uh, Defender 90 has a V8, but it's still underpowered. You know, that Wrangler has 285 horsepower. Um, second one, going topless is uh, very time consuming. You know, putting that soft top down, uh, you'll realize this when it rains and an old top can take you 20 to 30 minutes. Um, you know, you might have it down to 15. 
But, uh, you know, all the things like removing the doors is a major hassle on most older 4x4s. Uh, you pretty much can't do it on the Defender, which is a downside for me. Same with the Mercedes. It's very difficult. I have to remove eight bolts. Um, the Land Cruiser, you basically have to buy soft doors. The uh, suspension is, can be very stiff. The Defender has a coilover suspension. The FJ has... Um, uh, leaf springs, so very stiff. Even with the coilovers, it's not the soft ride of a modern Jeep. Five, significant waiting time for new parts. Yeah, you bet something's going to break, and you, you won't always be able to get them in you know, the same day or next day. You'll have to wait a week at least. The exhaust from old motors stinks in traffic. Uh, you know, you won't find this with every vehicle, but definitely with my five-cylinder diesel engine on my Mercedes Wolf, it's awful. It's, um, I don't like to smell it myself if the wind's blowing back towards me and I'm st stuck in traffic. Uh, finding a mechanic that wants to work on the vehicles can be difficult. Sometimes I find out with the Wolf or the FJ because they're just not familiar with it. Um, my, my harmonic balancer went once and uh, luckily the mechanic uh, lent me a bay and some of his tools and I fixed it myself with some of his help. Um, these vehicles tend to be noisy at high speeds, over 40 miles an hour, you know, that the soft top will flap all over the place. You know, it's fine for the first 30 minutes or if it's a brand new vehicle to you, but it'll get on your nerves eventually. You'll start driving your other car if it's a daily commute. Gas mileage is usually horrendous. You know, 10 to 12, 13 miles per gallon is common. Uh, it's very small gas tanks, you know, 14 gallons or so, so you'll have to stop for gas more frequently. Um, the re-engineered soft tops, not only are they noisy, but they pretty much always leak. They leak somewhere. Um, so 11, generally a miserable ride. If the hat top has to be on because it simply makes too much noise, these are really, these older vehicles are really awesome on beautiful days, uh, but they're not good for long distances. If you're concerned about safety, old 4x4s, you know, they don't have airbags, no anti-lock brakes. No frames engineered to crush in an impact. Um, 13, you can forget about highway riding, really, as old 4x4s, you know, they have high winding engines when you get above 50 miles an hour. You might be able to hit 55, 60, um, you know, and the high winding engine will drive you crazy after 30 minutes, especially if you're doing it on a regular basis. You'll switch to a, another car, a Jeep. You don't have that problem, a modern Jeep. And number 14, no accessories like cruise control, electric windows, backup cameras, heated seats, intermittent wipers, uh, you know, what else, power steering. Um, you know, obviously you can add some of this aftermarket, but it's not stock. Not everybody can work on it. Not everybody wants to work on it. Um, and you will have trouble with that custom stuff. Um, so, um, you know, and when you do, it'll be another thing you have to deal with. So simply put, an old 4x4 can't, you know, really be your primary vehicle as you uh, will get tired of it quickly, whereas a converted, you know, Wrangler JK definitely can be. Uh, they are, these old vehicles are, however, they're great for pleasure cruises on beautiful days. You know, people like to look at them. It's great to get the attention. Um, modern Jeep, especially a converted modern Jeep is, you know, really gives you the best of both worlds. So invest in something that you will be truly happy with for years to come that is both unique and very reliable. That's why, you know, I created this company and did this conversion. So go to appanon.com, please, and check it out if you want to try customizing your Jeep Wrangler JK. And hey, thanks for watching.